Well, you probably noticed I'm not Ed. I'm the, I'm the older version of Ed, okay? <laughs> See, he's younger than I am. But we, we pray for your pastor, and uh, I think we all know what it's like to have a bad back, right? A lot of us, so, so Ed, you get better, all right? But uh, I'm on call every weekend. If I'm not speaking, I happen to not be speaking today. And <clears throat> I got the call, so just uh, pleased to be here today. So if you open your Bible to Psalm 101, you'll see the notes in there. You don't have to be afraid here, all right? Hey, so you can see by, you can see by what we have right here. We've got VBS coming up, right? Starts tomorrow. We're pumped. Hey, I'm, I'm one of the community kids. I'm a VBS kid, all right? Uh, didn't grow up in a, a family of faith. We didn't go to church. My family, we didn't go not one single time to church ever as a family, ever. But you know what? Local church, just like First Southern, grabbed me and said, why don't you come, why don't you come on in? I got involved in VBS and the children's ministry, and here I am today. I, so I facilitate our church life team. It's pretty cool, you know? So I believe in what you're doing. This is strategic, okay? So when you think of EBS, I'm not going to say think of me, but I'm here because of children's ministry in a local church, all right? Because um, I was a mess. <laughs> Six brothers and sisters, we're all a mess. But man, I love, I love VBS, that's for sure. So VBS happens in the summer. What else happens in the summer? Right? Baseball, right? Baseball. And so I love baseball, love playing it, love watching it. And I love to see I love to see hitters. You know, I love to see I love to see the batters. Even softball, I love to. I mean, it's color. It's the World Series is going on right now. You got the women's, you got the men's. You know, it all takes place in the summer. I just love to see good hitters. Period. What's one commonality of all hitters in baseball? One commonality. Keep your eye on the ball, and they all they all enter what we call the mid-season slump. <laughs> Somebody said slump, right? All baseball players hit a slump. They just do. It is what it is. Chris Davis of the Orioles, this guy hit a 54-game slump, eight-month slump. He finally came out of the slump in Boston, and the Boston fans stand up and cheered for him. <laughs> this is a guy with a multi-million dollar contract. The greats, all, all get, they all hit slumps. Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, David Ortiz, Buster Posey, they all slump. I'll set this right I can't stand it because we don't have our podium, so I'm just going to lay it here, okay? It's a Louisville slugger, by the way. Seen the company. Lenny Lucchetti was a Little League All-Star. He batted third. I've met this guy. He's batted third. He's older now. But he slumped. He had a slump. Coach placed him from third all the way to seventh in the batting order. He's an all-star, so he's getting ready for the big game. He's going home after, after this pregame morning session. He's going home, and pigeons are flying overhead, right? Flying overhead, and what do they do? They poo all over him, man. <laughs> all over his noggin, all over his head. He's rubbing it in like shampoo. He goes, ah! He runs home. He jumps in the shower. He's scrubbing his head. He's scrubbing his head. He gets clean. He eats, and his mom says what, what only moms would say. All right, and you, you, if you're a mom, you know exactly what she says. You know, son, when a pigeon poo drops on your head, it means good luck. <laughs> and what did he say? Come on, mom, come on, come on. So he stepped up, he gets up to bat, Lenny gets up to bat, and psh, bases are loaded, by the way. He writes this in his book, bases are loaded, they pipe one, he closes his eyes, he starts to swing, he closes his eyes, pow, hits it, and he hits a grand slam home run. Pretty cool. So they win the game, and he says even to this day, when he sees pigeons, he'll divert and he'll walk under them. <laughs> For real, because he knows it's good luck. But we all slump, we all slump. King David wrote Psalm 101 when he was 30 years of age, and he became uh, the king of Israel. Those of you that are Bible readers, um, you know that King David is a spiritual slugger. 
He's a stud. He's a spiritual slugger for sure. As a shepherd of, of his family's sheep, in 1 Samuel, the prophet Samuel says that he killed the lion and he killed the bear. This is what David did. So I've actually met some people. I, I actually have a family member who hunts bears, right? So he's got a bear skin rug in his house. It's pretty cool. But I, I meet people that, that hunt bear. I've never met anybody that has killed a lion until at the university I met an African. We were talking one day, and we were talking about this, and he said, oh, I've killed a lion. I <laughs> you have not. I have killed a lion. I go, did you eat it? He goes, I ate it. It's not good, but I killed the lion. Came into his village. He protected his family. So David himself killed a lion, and he killed the bear. And also, in Samuel, Samuel uh, lets us know when he's a teenager, he also uh, comes up against a man called Goliath of Gath. Right? David and Goliath. Maybe you've heard this. If you're Bible readers, you know this. I was in the mall, and they had a, uh, a placard of Shaquille O'Neal, former center for the Lakers and other places. This guy's huge, man. I mean, he's, <laughs> I'm six foot, but he's like, he's way up there. I go, wow. So Goliath is two feet, five inches taller than, uh, than Shaq, right? David fought Goliath as a teenager, and he defeated him. And these are the last words of David. It says, uh, David and Samuel also, David, the son of Jesse, the declaration of the man raised on high, the one anointed by God of Jacob. He's known as the favorite singer of Israel. He's, he's a song man, right? I mean, we've got, we got uh, Pastor Tony up here, and he's a song man, right? And so David is a sweet singer of Israel. The Hebrew Bible, the Hebrews actually believe he wrote 73 psalms. He's a mighty, mighty warrior. He's the king, and he led the nation of Israel. That's King David. However, David is human. And those of you that read the Bible, you know that David slumped. He had a slump, right? He's aging. As he's aging, he's supposed to be out to war. The Bible's very clear. He's supposed to be out leading his troops in battle, but he's not there. He decided to stay back. We don't know why, but he's not fighting, right? We've got wars going on right now in the world, right? The leaders lead. That's what they do. David was not leading the nation of Israel at this time, but he, we find him. The Bible is clear. He's on the roof, and he looks, and he sees a beautiful woman bathing, and he said, who is she? He finds out her name is Bathsheba. He said, bring her to me. Bathsheba comes to him. He, he, he sleeps with her. She gets pregnant, and now he goes, what am I going to do now? The guy's in a slump. So what does he do? What would you do? This is what he did. He said, well, here's what I'm going to do. Obviously, he's in a slump. He's not thinking clearly. He said, I'll have her husband uh, killed. I'm going to make sure he dies, right? And it's not just any, any husband here. I mean, this is Uriah the Hittite. He's one of the mighty men. He's, he's a warrior. David is slumping. Think about this. This is the great king of Israel. He's slumping. So he pins Psalm 51. And this is the psalm he pins after he commits adultery, after, uh, after he has Uriah the Hittite killed. Bathsheba did give birth to a, to a baby boy, and the baby boy died. He writes Psalm 51. But he remembers when he wrote Psalm 101 as he was a 30-year-old man. He remembers this. And Psalm 101 is kind of a, it's a decision charter. It's, it's the way of integrity. It's, it's walk this way. Psalm 101 is where he goes to, uh, to, to recalibrate, I guess I would say. He gets refocused with Psalm 101. He continues to go back to Psalm 101. So I want you to look at Psalm 101 with me. And let's, uh, I want you to read it. And, and I want you to pay attention as, as we look at Psalm 101. Notice how many, try to count how many I wills are there. This is a quiz. I'll ask you. How many that we have in there at the end here? Psalm 101. And when you see I will, just kind of say it with me. I will, if you want. Verse 1. I will sing of your love and justice to you, Lord. I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. He's 30 when he writes this. He's 30. When will you come to me? I will conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. I will. 
not look with approval on anything that is vile. I hate faithless people, what faithless people do. I will take no part in it. The perverse of heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with what is evil. Whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a, pride, and a proud heart, I will not tolerate. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. The one whose walk is blameless will minister to me. No one who practices deceit in my house, no one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I will put to silence all the wicked of the land. I will cut off every evildoer from the Lord. How many I wills? Eleven? You count eleven? Yeah, you're by, you, you might be... This is uh, NIV right here. You read it in a different Bible, you'll say, oh, I don't know, I think there's nine, but there's 11. We definitely have 11 there. So David's decisions were to help guide his heart, his house, and his kingdom. Notice sing off in verse one. I will sing often of your love and justice to you. Lord, I will sing praise. This is the sweet singer of Israel. We know he played instruments. We know he wrote a lot of songs. We know he was in the shepherd. He was in the field. He would sing. So I, I hey, I actually met, I met a girl here at this church in 1984, right? Drop dead gorgeous. Best looking girl I've ever seen. Still the best looking girl I've ever seen. She was sitting right there. Actually, the stage used to be back there before the great fire. But I remember seeing this girl, and I said, I think I want to meet her. <laughs> you know? And she was thinking the same thing, I think I want to meet him. Well, I, long story short, I married this young lady who attended here. She was a student at the university in radio television, did an internship at K-Gun 9 News. K-Gun 9, all right? I'm a K-Gun 9 guy to this day. She sings. You know, David says, I will sing your love and justice. I'll sing praise. Kimmy sings. I, I just didn't realize. Huh? I knew she, I knew she's a, she likes to sing, but I married this girl. I wake up in the morning, singing. It's pretty cool. I did not grow up this way. With all this joy. I'm so thankful for good music, right? Thankful for good hymns of faith. Grateful for good Christian tunes. Grateful for really good music that makes me think about the Lord. Uh, but my wife sings. She sings when she cooks. She sings when she's walking. She's always singing. And I love it. I think this is pretty cool. Because <laughs> I cannot carry a tune. <laughs> so anyway, I just thought I'd brag on my wife a little bit. So David is a singer. And I encourage you to to find some good Christian uh, tunage that you can listen to. And I like to listen to the Psalms, so I, I actually, I don't think I have this in your notes, but Wasilla Bible Church actually did a Psalm project where they actually take every Psalm and they put it to music. So start with Psalm 1. It's really pretty cool. I've not met a group that has been able to do it like they do it. So it's Wasilla Bible Church Music Project. So number one, sing off. And number two, look at this. We're guiding our, our, our heart and our house here. I will be careful to lead a blameless life, he says in verse two. When will you come to me? I will con conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. He's 30. This is where he stands. He said, I will walk this way. The perverse of heart. Verse 4, the perverse of heart shall be far from me. I'll have nothing to do with what is evil. Whoever slanders his neighbor in secret, I'll put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a brown heart, I will not tolerate. This is how I will walk. But we know that he had slumped. He slumped. He did slump. Do you slump? We serve... Jesus. Jesus is the one who died for us. He is the savior of slumpers. <laughs> Jesus is the savior of those of us that are in the slump, right? It's funny. I, I used to just kind of listen to people say, well, you know, now that I'm older, now that I'm older, well, here I am. Now I am a little bit older. I'm going, ah, I think these guys are right. <laughs> these people over 50, they know what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, they do. I have a friend 
uh, Byron, he's, he's, like, he's about 90, and I asked him one day, I said, Byron, and just joking, he's my friend, what's it like being old as dirt? <laughs> and he laughed, he said, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, he said, because I'm not old, I'm getting older. I said, ah, that's the attitude I wanna have. I'm not old, I'm getting older, right? So you're not old here today, you're getting older. So David's decisions were helped to get, they were um, to help him guide his heart, his house, and his kingdom. So notice his kingdom here in verse 6. My eyes will be on the faithful in the land that they may dwell with me. The one whose walk is blameless will minister to me. Verse 7. No one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Every morning I'll put to silence all the wicked in the land. I'll cut off every evil doer from the city of the Lord. This is David. He's talking about Jerusalem here. And Jerusalem has trouble today, don't they? So, I was just really thinking about this a lot as I age. But Psalm 101 made me think about a concept that I've learned <clears throat> that I want to share with you. It's called the trust triangle. It's not in your notes, but I think it's going to be up here. I think, yeah, I think we got it up there, if you can see this. Keep in mind, uh, when we talk about trust, this is really good research, but uh, we want to talk about it from a Christian perspective also. But trust, when you say you trust someone or you trust, my, I trust this business, I trust this group, I trust this church, I trust you. Trust has three drivers, authenticity, logic, and empathy. When trust is lost, it can always be traced back to a weakness in one of these sides right here, when trust is lost. To build trust as a leader, we need to first figure out which driver you wobble on because we all wobble in life. Where's your wobble? Not just us as individuals. A church can wobble. Not just a church, but a business can wobble, right? They actually did this study. The, charter, the, the case study for this is Uber. Back during the pandemic, um, they, lost, they lost a lot of money because of the way they handled things. Their employees did not trust them. Anybody ride Uber? Use Uber? I mean, I'm an Uber guy, right? I travel and I gotta get a ride here and there, so I'll use Uber. But this applies to businesses, this applies to um, governments, this applies to us as individuals as well. So look at authenticity. If you're gonna trust, if you trust somebody um, or trust a company or whatever, we believe we experience the real you. I, I believe you are who you say you are. I trust you, yeah, you're authentic. Look at logic or competence, you could say. I know you can do it. Your reasoning, your judgment are sound. I know you know what you know. So not only do I believe you are who you say you are, but I believe you know what you're doing. And also, I believe you care. I think you care. There's empathy. I believe that you care about me and you care about my success. But we wobble. We wobble. And so there are five steps to recovering trust and regaining credibility. Go to that next slide there, guys. <clears throat> Number one, we've got to do what King David did. We want to admit the mistake. We want to admit the mistake, admit that we have sinned. God, please forgive us. And that's where Psalm 51 comes in. He actually wrote 51 after he, after he realized, boy, I'm in a slump. And, and you can read <clears throat> all of uh, Psalm 51 for yourself, but let me just read a couple verses, 51, two through four. He wrote this. Wash away my guilt and cleanse me from my sin, for I'm conscious of my rebellion. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you're right when you pass sentence. <clears throat> you are right when you pass sentence. You are blameless when you judge. Oh God, in verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, oh God, renew me with a steadfast spirit. So he wrote Psalm 51. To admit that, man, I have broken trust. So first, admit your mistake. So he admitted. He writes Psalm 51, lamenting the adultery with Bathsheba, the murder of her husband, and the death of their baby boy. Number two, acknowledge the responsibility. Take responsibility for the blunder. Own your mistakes, right? Own them. And next, I would say apologize. Or actually, this is, <clears throat> this is from Aubrey Malfour's great Christian uh, writer <clears throat> and thinker. He says, apologize, seek forgiveness, ask forgiveness. <clears throat> if it's within your heart, could you forgive me? Accept, accept the consequences of your action. You know, I have kids. <laughs> I, I had to tell them 
more than once, you, you'll need to accept the consequences for your actions, you know? There are no video games for you, you know, for the rest of your life, right? Act to correct the situation. How can I make things right? You know, a lot of times, it, it just, it takes time to process things. It takes time to process. <clears throat> Trust wobbles. Identify your wobble in the relationship, in the matter, and work on strengthening that. You know, I mean, I hear a lot of people don't, don't trust the government. Why? Where did they wobble? Where do they wobble, right, if you don't? What about a business? What about this? What about, what about your friends? What about this? I, mean, I think this applies in many areas right here. So identify your wobble in a relationship matter. Work on strength, strengthening the area of that triangle. David wobbled. The man showed poor judgment. He showed poor judgment. Uh, was that really him? Did he really do that? Did he really not care to have, this, to have this man killed, who was a mighty warrior? What's going on here? Come on, David. He wobbled. Psalm 101 has 11 I will declarations. David wrote this song as a young leader. But this song, like I say, this, this helped him kind of retool, recalibrate. Just, just to kind of get back where he needed to be. And it will help you as well in Psalm 101. So this decision charter, and you can see it here. Um, I think I've got it in my notes right there. Let's see, I had it there. But you can see uh, just a couple ideas that I did, okay? So I want you to see that, and uh, here it is. Couldn't find it here. I got about 10 of these. I thought I'd throw a few of these up here with you, but I will worship daily and weekly. And I'm going to remind myself that following Jesus, it isn't a hobby. This isn't a hobby. <clears throat> it's a commitment of my life. Um, I'm going to park the past. I'm not going to live in the past. I'm going to lay my, regret, my regrets at the Lord's feet. I'm going to look forward to what lies ahead. I made so many mistakes, but I'm going to park them. I'm just going to move forward, right? And you can put some I will nots on here also. <clears throat> I will not harbor anger or resentment by working to overlook minor offenses. You know, people say, I'll be, I'll be with all kinds of family this summer. And, uh, you know, um, some, some of my family members, they've got a large family, they're going to say some things that are just squirrely. <laughs> and I'm going to have to deal with it. And I can get all mad, you know, like I did when I was this, when I was little, you know. I can get all mad at my brother or whatever, but I'm just going to just overlook him. I'm just going to let him roll off my back. Unless I can't, and then I'll deal with it. You know, I'll challenge him to arm wrestling, you know. Relational intelligence. I'm going to work to have a healthy relationship with my kids, with their spouses, and their grandkids. I am. Or my grandkids, sorry. Uh, but I'm going to work to have a healthy relationship so what does that look like? So I have to think through, how can I be more with my kids? How can I chill more with my daughter, you know? How can I do this? How can, you know, so I'm, I'm thinking that through, and you can as well. So decision charter, your I wills <clears throat> and your I won'ts. So consider how you can walk this way in the way of integrity and build trust. Keep in mind, Jesus comes from David's lineage. The Lord Jesus himself comes from, from the line of Judah, from David's lineage, from the tribe of Judah. Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus died for our sin. He resurrected from the dead. Christ can give you a new life. Will you walk this way? We've got Vacation Bible School. It's, it's, it's right upon us. It starts tomorrow morning. Is that right? Tomorrow evening. See, you're smart. Do it in the evening. <laughs> Do it in the evening, <laughs> you know, or after work, and it's cooler, we hope, right? But the kids are coming, and you keep in mind that I was one of those little, I was one of those little, you know, grasshoppers, right, coming in here, unruly, from my non-faith family, and I had a, we, we had a great time, though. I loved it. Absolutely, I still love it. And we've got vacation Bible schools going all over, and so you just may want to come forward and pray, for Vacation Bible School. Let's just pray and pray for our leaders. Uh, but maybe you're in a slump today. And remember, Jesus is the Savior of slumpers. He will, help, he will lift you up. He will, he will forgive you of your sin. And he will put you on the right path. So let me pray for us.
Father in heaven, we, we do pause and we lift up this, uh, this psalm of decision, Psalm 101, decision charter. David's I wills and his I won't. What will I do? What will I not do? But even for the congregation here today, what will they do? What will they not do? Jesus is the Savior of those in a slump. So just pray. Just pray. If you're in a slump today, call out to the Lord and say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me. I have slumped. Again. Forgive me. Lift me up. Get me on the right path, even today. Some of you may need to do that for the first time. Call out to Jesus. Ask his forgiveness. We've got a great church here, uh, led by Pastor Ed, and uh, they would love to have you uh, join their fellowship. And also, Father, we pray for the community. We pray for all the kids that will be coming to VBS and all the teachers that will be here. We pray you'll just give them joy, and they'll just have a lot of fun. If I remember anything... Uh, about my, my time just being a kid in the community. It really was. Boy, you, you have a lot of fun at this place. And you learn a lot. So we lift this up to you, Father. Whatever, whatever your commitment is today, um, make it now. Where you stand or come forward, and we'll receive you up front. In Jesus' name, amen.